Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. Thanks for swinging by to the TN Artist uh, portal here. So I'm going to paint that scene that you just saw there. As you can see, I've got one background here and I've got the um, kind of a purplish color here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the stickers page and see if I can find one of these uh, different brushes that they have here. I like using these uh, in really kind of an unexpected way from what people are used to doing with it. In other words, I don't use exactly what you see here. So I'll go down to full explosion, grab it, and I'm actually going to play around with it to make the clouds that you saw in the main picture there. So I'll pick a color. Now this really depends on the hue um, for the way it's looking. It'll throw in these colors. Let me get this out of the way. It'll throw in these colors that are really random. And if I choose a darker hue, then it will make it uh, more of like a shadow and dull it down. See how it dulled it right there? Because the other one's going to be too bright if I leave it like that. So I'm just roughing in some shapes here that will become the clouds. And then what I'm going to do is... Um, uh, actually, i got to switch to... Sorry, I've got to switch to the palette knife here. So in the palette knife, what I'm going to do with it is just go down here to Heavy Blurred Frosting. And I use this for most of my clouds. So I'll start blurring it in to the background, this purplish colored background. And as you can see, it obliterates the flower shapes, which to me have no purpose. But it gives these nice, rich, random colors that you can see uh, for storm clouds, which to me are much more interesting if you're doing a storm than to just put like grays and stuff. So uh, this is where I like starting. So all I'm doing here, these are the default settings, by the way, while I put this in here. And I'm just letting the palette knife do its job and smear everything around. I'm not really applying much pressure. Um, it's a continuous brush so that when you do it, it'll just sit there and keep doing the movement over and over if you stay in one spot. So that's why I can just kind of circle it around. It's the exact same thing I would do if I was doing traditional painting with an oil brush. I would just sit here and lightly soften it up with the uh, oil brush, like a bigger brush. And move it around. So let me go back down to the sticker grab um, a slightly different hue. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I changed color here, but uh, really it's just the hue that does it. So by going down to a darker hue, I've got what's going to be the shadows. That's probably a little too dark. So let me, there we go, kind of do this. I'll, I'm going to go back and forth. You'll see as I keep going here. Um, so let me just kind of throw these in. And again, just going with random shapes. Uh, the main thing when you're doing clouds is to remember not to get um, too much pattern. In other words, uh, repetition. As humans, we look for pattern naturally, and so we tend to create pattern. And we can get the same thing over and over and over if we're, if we're not careful. So I'm just going to brush in some darks here and there. And then again, uh, I just push K, by the way, and that switches over to palette knife. And so I'm just going to start blending these in. But to me, you can see where it's really starting to get the push and the pull and the lights and the darks here, and plus that color. And so it starts just really kind of making your cloud base. And really, that's what this is. This is kind of the underpainting for the clouds. Okay, and I'm going to go in and define them more as I keep going. But this is just the underpainting. So let me just kind of keep going around here. and in here in the darks and the more I move this around the softer it's going to get and the more blended in it's going to get because uh, like I said it really behaves um, almost like oil paint would and that's the one thing with the palette knife um, there's different settings you can do but if you're doing like the heavy blurred frosting it really does soften it out like oils no matter which one of these uh, brushes or tools you use you can use the pencil and it'll do the same thing the main thing that tends to affect it is really the size of the palette knife. So I'm going to switch back over to stickers and just keep them with the same fluffy flowers. And this is just me. Uh, I'm applying different pressure, as you can see here, where it's kind of coming in a little bit and then back up to the lighter color. Uh, what I'm trying to do is pick out where I want some highlights to start and then back to the palette knife. And this is kind of cool, um, if you can see what I just did there and what I'm doing next. Once you've got it against those darks, you can get some neat blues and, and just almost like electric colors that are in there. 
Um, you can do it too much, uh, but it's, I don't know, I just really dig it. I think the, the way it turns out is just um, something special. So and I'm just going to keep pushing this back and forth here. There we go, so like that. And again, you can start to see the, the shapes and the... And all right, so now what I'm doing now is I just switched to my oil brush. And I'm going to look for the natural bumps and curves that came from this by doing it random and just highlight the edge of it. And this is going to be where my light source is coming from the left. So I'm trying to accentuate some of these lighter spots. And then I'll go back and blend this in. So let me just kind of get this on here and on here as well. The key to this when you're putting in highlights like I'm doing right now is to vary the line thickness and not make a continuous line. So see how I'm breaking it up and then just kind of jumping and skipping around. I want it all going on the same side of the cloud, but I don't want it to just be one outline. Okay. So once I get some of these on here, I'm going to go back to the palette knife and kind of smooth them out. This is how I make my clouds pretty much always. Um, so now let me kind of pull in. Now one thing with the palette knife, um, I want to show you here. You kind of have to play around with the size when you've got oil paint on top of this other stuff because sometimes it won't start blending it in. And so you saw I just came back up a little bit and I'm blending it. I'm actually probably going to need to go. Here, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, see how it softens it out and blends it into the color there? I may need to actually make this a little bit bigger. It's kind of a weird thing for the palette knife, but it it, um, it blends better the bigger it is, and so which sometimes is annoying, but I think for the most part it does really a good job. So let me just do this, and I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but my neighbors are chainsawing right now, so sorry about that. If you can hear it, I don't know if you can or not. It may just be me. This mic does a pretty good job of not picking up background noise sometimes. Okay, so just going to keep softening it in. And I wanted to go with this bluer color because I liked how some of that blue, and like you can see in the upper right, uh, just where, right here where I'm going now, um, that kind of bluish ethereal look to me is just kind of neat. So that's why I went with this blue color as well, because I wanted to, to accent that somewhat. And I think it's a good contrast. So you want to think about how your colors are playing and how, um, you know, what are you going for? Are you going for realism? Or are you going for mood? Are you going for abstract? What are you going for? For this, I'm going for more of an impression, impressionistic kind of feel. Uh, so in other words, I'm not worried about being overly uh, photorealistic. So uh, I'm just making this up as I go. Okay. And a little bit up here. So And that's one of the great things about um, painting and, and um, art rage is just the fact you can sit here and paint and make it up the stuff you want. And you're not, you know, if this turns out to be total crap, um, then I just delete the whole thing <laughs> so i don't have to worry about it. i'm not wasting any paint i've just wasted some time and really it's not even a waste then it's just practice 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 so let me zoom back out so you're and see you now you can see where i'm starting to blend it in i'm going to need to push this a little more though i can tell so let me soften some of these some more there we go it's a little better i think i'm still gonna have to push these darks a little more and these highlights a little more so First, let me really soften this because I want that more of an ethereal look. So see how it blends it out? This is what I was talking about. Now, see how that right here looks? I love that how that just happened right there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play around with these a little more first, and then I think I may go back and do something like that. But I just love that pop of the light against the dark right there. And remember, you can't show light if you don't show dark. So you've got to get the, the light and darks... Um, going ok 
Okay. So yeah, so I'm going to put some of these darks in here so that way the light really pops. Because there's a good jump in value there. You just can't tell it until you put a dark um, there. Actually, I was saying hue a minute ago. I just realized that it's, it's value, not hue. Value is light and dark. Hue is the color. Um, here I am trying to teach you something. And I'm saying the wrong vocabulary. <laughs> so hey, we're all human. Uh, so now I'm putting, I'm, I'm going to keep putting this. It's hard for me to paint and talk at the same time. So, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put these lighter values on here and these darker values side by side. So it really makes it pop a little bit. So, yeah. Do a little bit more. So you'll notice I don't go down to the tool picker to pick my stuff. I'm, I'm a shortcut key kind of guy. So when you see me jump around like I just did for the oil brush. All right, now see here, see how that really pops? That's what I love doing is, is this. So that's why I'm getting excited about this. Um, but anyway, so I, the tools here, oil brush is, is O, palette knife is K, uh, stickers is S. So the only one on here that has a, um, uh, a non-default is the uh, custom brush, which is the brush in the bottom uh, there between the ink pen and the glitter tube. So let me grab some more. All right, I want to break up this purple. So um, I'm negative painting here. This is what this is called. So I'm, I'm making a negative space out of the purple that's in the background. And so I want to make the purple kind of be like clouds. So I'm going to break a little bit of sky in between some of the purple here. So let me just, I'm going to size up my brush here. Hang on. So this is the palette knife. So see, by sizing it up, I'm going to get this softer uh, transition. So that's why I moved it up. And again, just default settings. I haven't gone in and played around with anything uh, as far as that goes, because I, I try not to do that too much for these tutorials, because I don't want you to get hung up on exactly what setting I used. Um, I want you to be able to just kind of, you know, grab it and go. So many people get, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of this too, so many of us get caught up on what's the exact brush and setting for all that and it doesn't really matter it's just practice okay so see how that's pushing that back to look like the purple's clouds now and that there's something behind it that's the sky or a lighter color i just got to keep breaking this up a little bit it's a good way to do atmospheric um, perspective so Just keep pushing these. So, hey, make sure and comment below and tell me what you think so far. You know, what do you think? Is it uh, is it generating questions for you? Am I going too fast? Is there something else you need? So um, I'm going to blur these down here a little bit because I'm about to do the, uh, the seascape part of it. So I need to soften this so I can draw it. So if I was doing this in... I'm just going to keep going back and forth while I'm talking. If I was doing this in um, oil paint or acrylic even, I would have taped off the horizon line to be a nice straight horizon line. So now I'm going to need to do that here in just a second using the selection tool. So I'm going to use it. Let me uh, jump over here to settings. You can see it's got different ones. I'm grabbing the, just the rectangle. Um, and minimize these out of the way so that you can see. All right, so I want to figure out where my horizon line and yeah, I think that'll work. So I'm going to put it on top of these clouds. So I'm not having to worry about the paint from below it. So this is doing this basically simulates the paint has dried and I can paint over top of it. So let me grab a kind of a turquoise bluish dark blue kind of color. I gotta find the right one. Um, yeah, I think this can work. All right, so let me get the fill bucket right here and fill this. So it's kind of a dark turquoise kind of color here because I need, again, I need the darkness to come in. So I'm going to go a little bit darker. And then I'm going to grab the pen tool, which is probably not what you would think of, but it has a good smoothing. And I'm doing these little comma strokes, or I sometimes call them banana strokes because it almost looks like a banana laying sideways. And I'm just going to keep kind of rocking back and forth. Let me, you know, 
deselect that because I can't stand marching ants. Um, so I'm going to keep going back and forth in this. This is, I'm not trying to get any detail. I'm just trying to be really random in these strokes, but I want all these strokes to just be this comma stroke back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can see how it starts to build up that illusion of waves in the background. Okay. Because waves are just made up of, of ripples. They're basically little hills that are coming towards you. And so you're going to go back and forth like this. Oh, hang on, let me... You know what? These are going to be in my way. Hang on. Uh, da, 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 view and uncheck some of these because I don't need all these. I don't need references. I'm not using any references. And minimize this. I'm terrible about not moving these things out of the way at first. Sorry. So I'm just going to keep uh, doing these little banana strokes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not the most exciting thing in the world to see. But, you know, waves are, if you saw my other video about the beginning of waves, and I need to soften this horizon line. I don't want that, I want the horizon line straight, but I don't want it harsh. You know, like that. So let me just palette knife this real quick while we're talking. So, again, I'm just going to uh, soften this up a little bit. See how that fades it into the clouds? So now it's not that harsh, but yet I still have a straight horizon line. That's what I want. It's very important with water and with, um, you know, like reflections and puddles and stuff to have that. The, it's got to stay straight. Otherwise, it's going to look like your water is pouring off your canvas, be it oil, be it traditional oil painting or acrylic painting. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth here. But like I was saying, in, in waves consist of uh, just uh, ups and downs coming towards you. So that's what this starts to imply. And my um, ink tool, my ink pen, is set on a uh, one of the net, just default settings for it. it's it's um, it's a default setting that's going to allow it to be kind of transparent. So it's just going to keep adding to it as I go. So really, I can just keep this coming down. Now it 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 can kind of look like a mess here. Um, but as I draw in these other waves, I'm going to kind of sketch in where my next wave is going to be. I'm going to think I'm going to do two waves. Yeah, like one big one here in the front. And yeah, and then I'll have that kind of overlap that other one in the back. So maybe it's, you know, like a rocky bottom that's breaking up over coming to shore. So then I can just go in and fill this in. And uh, so this one I'm going to have kind of crest here. So that becomes a big trough because it's getting closer and it's pulling up into a wave. And again, I don't have to be real precise here. I just want to kind of fill in and give myself an idea of what's going where. So this will be coming up here. And this is just me sketching at the moment. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, but I need to soften this out, just kind of take some of the distraction away. There we go. If, again, if I was using oils or acrylics, I would just have a large brush and I just would be fading this out right here. So it kind of soften it. Okay, so that gives me just a ghost of a painting or a ghost of a drawing of where I want what to go. So now I just need to darken this in a little bit. So I'm going to take this oil brush and just kind of shape it in more so this back wave especially is really broken out from the uh, background waves and a little bit more darkness back here to kind of break up some of that so remember with painting you know you want to work the whole painting at a time i tend to work in stages like background to midground to foreground and so i'm going back to the midground now and kind of darken this up a little bit but I'm jumping around. In other words, I'm not zooming in and focus on one little spot and then zooming in and focus on another one. I've got to think about the whole uh, painting in harmony. So I'm going to switch palette knives. Um, I'll go to blend color. This takes a little getting used to because the angle of that uh, line is the angle that your paint is going to smear. You can rotate the canvas. You can rotate set the rotation on this. Um, and so forth, but I don't really overly worry about it too much. I can usually get it to behave. 
So basically what I'm saying is I think sometimes this is just a little too loose for turning. But here I'm just kind of softening this down and, and starting the, again the underpainting for what's going to be my waves. And, and that's really the best way to do it. And you can see that I did change the pressure. This is one of the ones that you got to go in and change the pressure from the default. The default for this knife is always like zero pressure, which I never understand, but that's just what it is. So now I want to just kind of keep pushing this around and defining that. So, and go back here and soften some of these waves too. Make it just a little bit more solid there. Because again, I'm going to have this brighter wave in the front, so I've got to kind of smear all this out to make it darker. Which I could go in and paint it, but I don't really want a, a solid color because it's going to leave brush marks by me doing it this way. And that is one of the things I like using Art Rage instead of like, Photoshop. All right, so let me see. Um, let's switch to the custom brush. And I'm going to go. Let's see. Uh, these cloud brushes tend to work pretty good for starting stuff. I need a more of a highlight color. Um, yeah, right about here. I'm going to start putting in, still sketching, but I'm going to put in some of the foam and some of the light breaking through. Okay. I don't like that. Let me see. Again, one of the nice things, you can play around and hit undo. <laughs> not have to waste any ink. I'm going to go... Uh, let's see. There's a bunch of default brushes here that are really nice. Um, what am I looking for? Where is it? Oh, you know what? You go to stickers. I think it's over here in stickers. Always with the new custom brush, I always look for the stuff in custom brush, but I remembered what I'm looking for is right here. Seafoam. <laughs> go figure. Uh, this does a pretty good job of, of blending in some of the stuff, so let me try it, see what I think. Yeah, so you can kind of sketch with it. Jump back to the hit K for the pellet knife, and then start laying a C. So this is going to become where the wave is thinning out, and you can see some of the light coming through. So, and again, remember, you know, you've got, you have to put your dark down first and then come in with your lights. So what I'm doing here, this is uh, some of the sea foam that would be caught up in the wave and will kind of give the direction to which way the wave's going. So I just want these real loose and light. Uh, no real pattern. Again, this is one of those areas you got to really be careful to keep from repeating the exact same pattern. But just kind of sketch it in, rough it around. Um, there's not a wrong way to do this. It's really just playing around with the light and see if you like it. So you can look at reference pictures. Whoops, take a minute. I forgot to move the uh, palette here. So let me do that real quick. All right, sorry. Um, but just, uh, you know, look at reference pictures. Look at uh, um, photographs online of like stormy seas. And you'll see that it's a really random patterns that are made but there's a specific flow to them. Because remember, water is going over everything. So if there's rocks underneath this wave, then they're going to go that certain way. But as it curls up, you'll start to see it. So, And that's really what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to almost dry brush in. Look, actually, I'm going to switch over here to the chalk tool for a second because sometimes that looks a little better. Because I don't want it to be um, flat. I'm trying to make sure and add in some texture. I really love texture, so you just want to keep dry brushing this in. Again, if I was using acrylic or oil, I would have very little paint on my brush itself. And I would very lightly be going across this and letting the um, canvas take what it wants. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm using very little pressure between it and then I'm going back and forth between to soften it with the smudge tool from the well this palette knife with the uh, blending color and it starts to lay in some of these softened tones but it's all going the same direction it's all going um, where I need for it to start really 
getting a good underpainting and, and really kind of shape the wave cresting over in the background. So see how you can, you know, just by sitting here playing around and smearing and getting the different colors, you can see where the wave is starting to take effect. But I need to probably... Oh, well, first hang on, I'm gonna go to this hard shader and pencil. some more of this shadow for this wave cresting over. So remember, it just folds over on itself and it's going to have this uh, trough that's it's creating. It's going to be a little darker in the bottom and so forth. work on the foreground wave but we don't want to sit there and fight that so I think I'll switch over to another layer okay a little bit darker color here well maybe I'll do some highlights first hang on So again, remember the foam, as the wave curls over, it pulls all that foam up on itself and spirals over. And that's what gives you that look of, a, of the direction that the wave is going. So I'm just trying to lay some of that in here. To really, again, it's just sketching, just kind of getting a feel for the direction I want it to go, get a feel for how I want it to look. But yeah, as a wave moves around it pulls all the foam up and then it circles up on itself where it thins out and the light comes through and then it goes over but i do need to put a few highlights back here to tie all this together so again trying to move around the painting more um it is a hard thing to do my you know even i get caught up in just doing the same thing work in the same area and you can work it to death if you don't make yourself move around the painting and get the harmony of the colors and the mo motion that you're trying to create Again, this uh, pen tool is great because it'll you can have the there's a setting called smoothing, and then as you put it in, it'll smooth out these marks that you're doing. So this over top of the stuff that I was doing, like with the pencil and the chalk tool, it really kind of plays the smooth and the rough against each other. Kind of smear this down a little bit. That was getting a little too smooth. There we go. All right, yeah, just like that. You see how that's kind of looking like the light's starting to pop through there now? But a little too much. So let me kind of smear some of this back down through it. And again, it's just push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, light, dark. But all that texture goes together and it gives that feeling of light coming through and starting to curl it over. And then I just you know, keep playing around with it. And yeah, this watercolor brush is, is good for softening things and adding in kind of a transparent look. But there's a better one than that. I'm going to use some water. So what the Just Water Brush uh, setting does on the brush is you can see how it kind of blends these colors together and lightens them out. So this lets me really kind of play around with the foam even more. It softens everything. Because again, this is in the background. I don't want it to be super sharp. I just wanted to kind of hint at the foam that's moving and twisting and turning because that'll really give the impression of turbulent waters. And I just need to put some negative spaces in here, so spots between the, the highlights. So, 
All right, so see how that's starting to look like foam coming up and still has highlight between it? That's what I'm going for. And then I still need to play around with the pushing this back a little bit. It's starting to get a little too solid. And now I can carry it over and you can see the pipe that's starting to form. But I don't want it to be too bright yet. I'll probably go back later and add some highlight to it. But again, just pushing and pulling everything that I'm doing here. So remember, it's really random uh, for the marks. So I'm just trying to keep them open and keeping interesting spaces between them. And again, move around and kind of soften some of these back here. Yeah, I really like how this is making this foam look, so I'm just going to keep doing it. As Palpatine would say, do it. So, sorry, that's really random. <laughs> All right. So, there we go. Yeah, that's starting to give kind of that. It's a little too chaotic at the moment, but I can bring it around a little bit later. All right. So, I need... Yeah, let's try this. So this is just the cloud brush. It's, from the, it's one of the default brushes for the custom brush. This is the one that has the... Um, I put the special setting on for our hotkey. So for me, I just hit Z and I go to the custom brush. So again, I want to paint in what direction the wave is flowing. So I'm just going to play around with both of these colors here. So now the just water for the watercolor brush, you see how it softens this? And really kind of lets me thin it out and, and draw with it. But every time I do, it, it kind of waters it down more and more and starts to really give that foam feel over top of what I've done as an underpainting here. So you can see the sea foam that is starting to come around. I think I'm going to have this wave kind of go over like it's breaking over a rock underneath. So, but first, let me kind of push it up here a little more. But this will become kind of the eye of the wave, as you saw in the first bit there. That was really quick, but... over the other part so I, in my mind I, I see that there's a rock right under this so it's got the wave almost breaking in half as it comes up over one like swells up over it and then on the front I'm gonna have it hit another one so but again just random sketching in of this banana shape if you look at it, I mean it's really what it is it's just that continuous um, back and forth of curving it but I'm trying to make sure that it's blending and thinking about what would the topography be underneath this wave. Like so. And just kind of, again, sketching this out, rough spaces, leaving some of the dark showing through the lighter. Because that's what really sells the movement of the water, is the sea foam is constantly breaking apart and being pulled back up into a wave and, and flowing over everything. So, you can see right here, I'll probably put a rock right here. Probably have it kind of folding over and crashing right here so another tube will be forming here which will make that other one push back in the distance there so you can see again I'm just sketching out the shape just thinking about the flow of the water 
Um, I think I'm going to put another rock over here as well, but I still want to know what direction the water is kind of going and where my crashing is going to be. So. Like so. But what do you think so far? Is this making sense? Leave me a comment but down below. Let me know what questions you have. Is this making you think about? As I sit here and schedule this out and kind of play around. So I've got this darker wave here that I can kind of blend into that is probably the backside of this wave that I've just created and soften all this up a little bit. But now you can kind of see the flowing of the water and the foam pattern. So I need to start defining this a little more. One of the nice things about working in layers is that now I can go back down to, to here and put a layer between. And if I want to add in some highlights, I can just grab the airbrush. Um, and a little bit of darkness here. So I want to put a little bit of dark here and there to make the foam stick out. But I can also go back here in a little bit and add highlights the exact same way. But see how I put some of this dark here? And now it makes that foam on top really kind of stand out. See, now you can kind of see the kind of gives it even more depth just instantly. And that can be the rock that's underneath it. But I get there by sketching it first of just the direction I want it to be going and flowing. Let me keep putting this in here. Okay. So hopefully you can see how I'm pushing and pulling this to get the uh, waves look. So I'm going to put a highlight right here. Maybe a little much, but I'll go with it for now. Probably just blend this together, to be honest. Let me see. And soften a little bit with the water. It's definitely too bright like the otherwise. But by doing this, I can draw more foam underneath the foam. So I'm breaking the fourth wall by breaking the fourth wall. Anyway, but I can keep putting um, this what would normally be the eye of the wave as it's breaking over that rock. Just a big swell of water coming across is how I picture this. soften this even more in a second but I'm just trying to get that texture and push and pull the light and dark and so by using the water for the watercolor brush I can really pull that paint um, around and make it thin out but I need to soften this a little bit but let me move this. I'm going to put some highlights and stuff over here, too. Again, like I said, trying to push and pull um, the areas, but I need to put some over here so that it would be where the light would be catching it as well to uh, come through the wave of the top of that uh, funnel there, top of the tube. And these colors are, you know, I'm going with extreme colors here um, because I think it just kind of helps show um, the technique behind it. Uh, it kind of helps push it. I know like when I used to watch um, Bob Ross and Bill Alexander and Jerry Arnell and all those guys, especially uh, Bob Ross and, and Bill Alexander, they would use the really vivid colors for it to show it better on TV. Um, so that's kind of the thought process here is just have it show up, you know, push it to the extreme so you can kind of see it a little better of what I'm doing uh, by doing it here in Art Rage versus just an oil brush or acrylic. Uh, I'm not, my hand's not in the way. So I do want to push this back though with a little bit of a different value. 
because it is kind of getting a little too crazy. Break up some space. up here a little bit putting the oil brush in here I can blend it out a little more here in just a second Trying to really get the feel for the uh, water as it pushes up over whatever's underneath it, you know, like I said, the rock or whatever. And some of this I'll cover up with uh, spray as well. So, but because I've got a layer underneath the other foam I just painted, it really gives me a chance to to push it and play around with it. well because I want to get that movement of the highlighted sea foam curling up over the waves. I'm halfway tempted to put a shipwreck out there. This is just kind of a these colors it's kind of a spooky otherworldly kind of waves and stuff that I've kind of got going on here. I do want to push this back a little bit because I want it to be a shadow. break up some of this. This may be the, it may look like this because I just finally had a chance to watch um, Pirates of the Caribbean 3. So, or 4 or whatever the last one was. I don't even remember. Um, but some of the uh, otherworldly stuff that's in there kind of influences it. I like these stormy coves. I just like painting them. Some people like them, some don't. I don't really care. I'm just doing this to have fun for me and hopefully teach somebody um, like yourself some stuff about how I do it and why I do it and what my thought process is while I'm doing it. There's a lot of people out there that I'm sure that do better jobs of getting the realistic looks. I'm sure there's other people that I do better than, but I'm not really worried about that. It's just a matter of um, painting, you know, I do need to, um, push some of this foam around a little more. It's almost like with the clouds, I'm looking for the natural spots to kind of layer foam on top of foam. So I'm looking for the kind of the natural highlights and stuff, if you will. Now this brush, you'll see how it's changing colors and changing hue here. Um, that's just the paint interacting with the other paint underneath it. So it's not me really doing anything. It's just that same color blending with what's underneath it. So. Switch to the chop brush, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, oil. So I want to give a little more definition here of uh, the sea foam. I, I like kind of using this grayish purple for this because it really goes against the brighter colors I have. 
but I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna queue it like this or not. Hmm. Yeah, it's starting to look cool. But again, this I'm looking for the natural breaks that I've already established from just kind of scribbling all these underpaintings here and see where I can find it, what I can do. So I'll go, let me go back and soften some of these with the watercolor brush. And that lets it one blend into the other, into the other. Ocean's really interesting to paint. Um, I'm gonna cut some of this back. I've got the eraser. Um, they're really interesting to paint for foam because it really is controlled chaos. It's almost like abstract painting in a uh, you know in a representative painting. But that's why it's impressionism. I'm just trying to give the impression of an ocean, the impression of lights and darks, the impressions of movement. That's what an impressionistic painting is, and that's really kind of how I prefer to paint. So back to my old brush. Start defining some of these. Now see how much this hue, now if you look, because if you look at the color I have over there on the right, my palette, it looks like it'd be a lot darker. But again, with the way it's interacting with the colors and the values that I have here, it's super light looking. get that feel for the light coming across that kind of dip in the uh, wave there so that it really looks like it's coming across to the uh, the foam and highlighting it sorry my computer's lagging a little bit Okay, it's actually lagging a lot. Yeah, there we go. I really got to get a new computer, but I don't have the world's greatest computer for doing all this stuff. I had a better one, and it died, unfortunately. Um, so I've got this Lenovo, which is decent, but it doesn't quite have everything I need for it. All right, so you see just subtle change in the value there, and now it still stays in shadow. Again, just trying to look for the the highlights and the dips and the the valleys and the peaks for where I can um, kind of blend all this back and forth and just follow those irregular shapes. Just always remembering that it's water flowing, oh, it's foam flowing over the water, which is flowing over the rocks. So I want to th be conscious of the valleys and and the, uh, the peaks and everything else so I can really push and pull and play around with the direction it's going. And with this ink brush, I can get a real good softening of everything here. gives me that same grayish color that uh, I was talking about for the foam. By like sitting here and playing around with this comma stroke or the banana stroke or whatever you want to call it, you can see how it gives direction to where the water is. I don't know how much I'm going to define this rock over here to the left that I was just painting. I do want one there because it's got to have something for the water to crash against. And the same here. I think I'm going to put one here as well. I'm just not sure how much exactly where yet, I guess, is a better way to say it. some of this over here because I gotta start pushing the colors here a little bit to 
highlight it some. Otherwise, it's going to just look like a big blob of black over there. Even though it's not black, it's actually a dark green. But, but you know what I mean. Okay. So hopefully you can see the shadow and the light coming across for where um, the wave is up and the light's not quite coming all the way through and maybe that's where the rock is. Um, but you see how the picture really, once you start playing around with the shapes and the, um, the water and everything else, it really starts to dictate what's going to be where. You know, at least for me it does. It, it's just by playing around with the color and playing around with the shape of the foam and everything else, it really starts to develop the thought of, okay, what's under here? How would that react with the light? How would it push and pull? Um, you know, and so that's what's going through my head is how do I move this around to kind of fit better? Uh, my computer's lagging. Sorry, guys. I hate it when it does this, but it's just messing with me. All right, so I'm going to soften this some more by just going over it. I need to add a little bit of texture back here in the background, too. To again, work all over the painting. But to figure out where the light is, where the dark is. Um, and I want this to be really rough seas, so I'm trying to really break up any of these solid spots. Let's see, I may need to go to another layer. Okay, so now what I want to do is go back over to the brushes, and I'm going to start putting in the foam, I think. There's a couple different ones I use for that. Um, from textures, what I'm looking for. Oh, try this crackle real quick. I want to see if it'll maybe define a little bit. I don't know. It may, it may not. I mean, look, this is just me playing here for a second, so bear with me. Oh, the crackle can be a good way to put in some of the veins that you see on a wave when your computer's not lagging. Um, it's really soft and subtle thing, um, but. Probably can't even see what I'm doing here. Maybe you can. Just trying to see if I like it or not. And um, no, I don't. So. Let's see, I don't think I need another layer, but I do need to probably switch brushes here. So. Lichen, there it is. And of course, I've also used these particles and pores before to get foam. Let me try these first. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just underpainting where I want the foam. Now, this would be sea spray from like the wind or, or um, not so much the rock, but from wind blowing it across. I want to see how this looks. Yeah. And again, it's interacting kind of with some of the paint underneath it. And and this is one of those ones where it, um, the more you push, the more random it gets for like lights and darks. So I just, I just let it happen because it really, to me, it builds up the layers of texture for seafoam. And again, I'm trying to think, how is this breaking across? How would this be coming in, you know, through? What's it hitting? I'm not overly worried about detail right now. I just want to get in shapes and contrasts of light and dark. Go back here and put a few on this one so you can tell it's a wave breaking.
Yeah, a few here and there. Again, moving around the painting, trying to make the colors and the textures be harmonious. Yeah. I think I am going to switch, though. Uh, try these. These work sometimes really good, too. So these sometimes will be a great way to get more of the uh, random spray kind of coming up. So I think I'm going to have to go a little bit lighter so it shows. Yeah, there we go. Again, it's just layer upon layer, but then, um, let's see what these dots look like. They can be pretty good sometimes. There's a lot of really cool brushes in the custom brush, especially for doing stuff like this. But see how it kind of you can throw in a spray really quickly and easily with it instead of having to sit there and paint everything. But um, I just go around these ones on the bottom, the particles, the dots, the you know, and just build layer and texture and contrast. And this is almost thinking about how a cloud would be shaped, but just a little different. Um, but it's a similar thought process, I guess is what I mean. You know, I don't want to make everything one solid mass. I want to kind of break up some of the lights and the darks and, you know, we're a little bit of our light source would be hitting here, but not there, um, and so forth. I think I'm going to go with lichen, though. I really like using this lichen brush. As you can see here, watch. It really starts to throw in some sea spray really well, because I've got that other texture underneath it. Just this by itself wouldn't be that convincing and wouldn't look that good but when you throw it in with these other textures underneath it it really starts to harmonize it and pull it together see and it's just a random uh pattern that it puts on for the brush itself depending on the size and and turning the brush and everything else but it works great to put it with these other ones and really kind of start pulling them together just by changing the size and the the amount of uh, pressure you put, well, not even really pressure, really just the area that you stay in because it's just going to keep building it up. So again, I'm thinking, where's my highlight going to be? I'm probably going to have to go ahead and soften some of this too. So just like the clouds, I don't want one solid area of highlight. You know, that would just be boring. So I want to think, okay, where am I going to put uh, different breaks of light and dark so that it's hitting one spot, but it's not hitting another. So, okay, so see how you're starting to get that? So let me zoom out a little bit. All right, and I, yeah, let me zoom here because that's about the best size to put the whole painting on the screen. But see how it's, you know, it's pushing and pulling it already? I'm getting that kind of that depth. Let me close this. I keep forgetting to do that. All right, so, like so. And go back here and do the same. What a constant push and pull, lights and darks. I do want to soften some of this, I think. So I'm going to go down here to heavy blurred frosting again. Same thing I used for the clouds. And change the size, so it's like so. 
and this will kind of blur out some of the uh, foam come through because it's too sharp then you don't really have a place for your eyes to rest it's too much chaos so I want to kind of fade it in a little bit here and there Like so. And kind of play around with this over here a little bit. Especially some of this in the back, because that's going to be further away. I don't want as much detail on it, so I really need to push it back quite a bit. You see how softening that makes it recede? But yet I've still got all this detail in the front and the highlight pulls it forward. So, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm just kind of looking over here, see what I need to do next. It's actually not lagging this time, it's me. <laughs> Figure out what I'm gonna do. Um, I think I am going to add rocks. So the best way to do that is to go to the selection tool here and go freeform. And let's see where I'm going to put them. I am going to do uh, another layer and just kind of draw it in here. Again, just a rough shape. And I want to think about the foam and how it's coming in. So change the direction some of the rock and kind of make it blend in in the bottom. And we'll go to the oil brush. We need the kind of a brownish color here. I'm gonna go let's see. It's a good start. Change brushes or not. Let's go with this one. This is just the dry brush. I'm trying to, I don't want that solid paint layer. So again, I'm trying to throw in some texture for a rock. And now I need to, mm, probably need to switch brushes. Go to the ink brush because it's going to give that softer darks that I'm wanting. So right now I'm just thinking in and sketching in some of the dark tones for the rock. And I'll just keep playing around with this and keeping it somewhat confined to this uh, selection so that I can really not have to worry about overly changing the shape. But I do need to change the values here. Move this over a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, let's just airbrush some of this in. It's taking too long with the ink brush, with the ink uh, tool. Oh, there we go. I think it's starting to look better. Starting to get a little bit of a, a rock shape. Yeah, I want to smear some of this out. So let me, yeah, just go with the hard out smears. This is going to give more cracks and crevices and blend the color. up here so it's a little bit easier to see but by using this hard out smear I can just push and pull the darks that I've got in there and um, even like what I'm gonna do now is just kind of flatten this out up here a little bit so you see how that just bends and pushes the paint around so it really lets you shape it look for those crevices and everything else So, 
I should probably do another tutorial. I did a really brief tutorial on rocks, on how to do a rock, but I should do some more because A, I could use the practice, and B, um, I imagine somebody out there could, you know, use the uh, tutorial on it. So what do you think? Do you need a tutorial on that, on rocks, or on, um, on what? So I'm just going to put some highlights on this up here to kind of give more definition to the top of the rock. And where some water may be running off and everything else. So that's why I'm trying to put some of that bluish green in there because it's it's going to pull it together with the rest of the painting. Again, color harmony. So, but yeah, leave it down in the, in the comments. Tell me, you know, what is it you're wanting to see next? Um, I'm thinking about doing a, a series of just quick tutorials on things like rocks and, and so forth. Or I could do more of these longer paintings like this. Um, tell me what you prefer. You know, because I want to make sure that you're getting as much of this as possible. I mean, I do take a lot of these and paintings I do on here, and I make prints out of them, and I sell them. So if you ever see one you like, just uh, hit me up and let me know. You can, um, I'm going to jump over here to a different uh, blurred frosting so I can blend this down into the water. But yeah, in the uh, Facebook group that I have, um, it's a private group for everybody that's doing these tutorials with me. Um, jump over there and, uh, you know, you can reach me there and say, Hey, I'd like to have a little print of that. I do them in, uh, just small little prints. A lot of times, like even, uh, they're photo prints. So I get them, uh, printed up so I can do a limited run and then I'll sign them and send them out. And so they're, you know, like five bucks for just, um, it by itself. So for a signed photo print. And uh, it's a great way to just have some nice little artwork in your house. But that's, you know, I, I do sell those. And But over in the Facebook group, uh, if you want more tutorials and more how-tos and more discussion about art and art lessons, then come over there and join us. It's just forming, so there's uh, not a whole lot of people in it yet, but that's growing, so. All right, so I want to put more highlights in here. And, uh, you know. I can blend this back a little bit. Jump back down to the blend color. Let's see if I can't. There we go. It gives a little bit more texture and direction for the stone. And let me take the pencil tool and kind of sketch in where I think some highlights of water and stuff should be. And the same thing, you know, if I'm wanting this to look like water going across it, then that water needs to be fairly horizontal. And I'm just grabbing colors from the background. You can hold Alt and click, and it'll grab a color from the background. So again, trying to get that color harmony. Erase that real quick. And... Uh, so that everything goes together. All right, sorry, this is it's kind of hard for me to talk and uh, paint this at the same time. This is why I speed a lot of these paintings up so people don't have to sit here and wait for me to say something while I'm painting. <laughs> so, but I wanted you to see it real time of how long it takes to put one of these together just for the uh, painting part, not to mention the video editing and everything else. So, the other thing too with speed painting, when you see the speed paintings on there, it makes you feel like, at least it does to me, it makes you feel like you need to. Um, go faster, you know, even though you're watching it sped up, it's like, ah, oh, should we have to do this as much quicker? So. But in reality, it takes whatever time it takes. All right, so I need to put some highlights. Yeah, there we go. So that makes it look like it's kind of reflecting some of the light around it onto it. So I'm probably gonna have to soften this back out. It's a little too vivid. Yeah, 
to soften this. I just want a hint of that. I don't want it to be you know, solid. So again, with the watercolor brush, just kind of soften it out. We're gonna make it look like water is flowing over the sides. By default, it goes back to zero, so I have to go up and change it again. That's why for a second there it wasn't doing anything. And by pushing this around, it gives kind of that um, rough feeling and smoothed out texture. You know, well, blended texture, not smoothed out, but blended. Um, I have the loading. Loading, you can see there, is set to zero. You can actually load that with uh, paint and use like a standard palette knife. The marker tool is kind of cool. It's almost like using a Coptic marker and um, it kind of blends in to around it, so, but it's good for putting in cracks and crevices because I need to break this up from the wave in front of it. So the best way to do that is give it a little more definition. So again, what are you guys thinking? What do you what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? I'm always open to constructive criticism. If there's something you don't like, um, we can talk about it. Maybe there's a reason I put it in there that I like it, and you may not, which is perfectly fine. Um, you know, but uh, maybe it's you see something that I can improve as well. What do you think about the uh, the way it looks, the flow, the layout, and everything else? Join me over in the Facebook group and let's talk about it. Leave a comment here. Um, you know, I want this to be as instructional as possible. Sometimes it's just watching the painting happen. For some people, uh, others they want to know specifics about you know what tool you're using, what setting. Again, don't get caught up on that. You'll notice I'm not changing the settings around a whole lot. I'm using a lot of default ones because I don't want you to... Well, first of all, they work really great a lot of times just for the setting they're at. So you don't have to fuss around with it a lot. Um, but the other thing is, like I said before, I don't really want people getting hung up on, oh, does he have that at 55% or 35%? Or, oh, i got to back it up and look. Just play around with the settings, you know, on your own. Again, I'm switching back over to the water because these lines are getting a little too uh, too much line around it. makes it look like a cartoon. So I've got to break up some of these lines and soften them. And by doing it this way, it lets me kind of pick highlights and where water's flowing off. It kind of fades it into the water below and brings it ties everything together like so because this is on top of the other stuff wherever i bleed out the water on it it almost acts like an eraser but it gives you a gradation all right let me zoom back out Yeah, it's not too bad. Need to keep punching it up a little bit more. So probably going to spend about another 30 minutes on this. Um, so let's see. I think I need to maybe put another rock over here like I was talking about. Kind of balance out the picture. It's really heavy on the left side right now. So there's several things I need to do. One of which is... Uh, let's see what layer I'm on. I need to name these layers. Let me name these real quick. You just do that by clicking on the layer's name. So that's the foam layer. So we'll call it spray because I do have the other sea foam. 
some spray foam and yeah that's the actual foam Oh, top foam. That's all the under eye and everything else. So, let's call it eye highlight. Open type. And this is the horizon for the ocean. So, just call it dark ocean. And then sky slash clouds. Okay. Let me drop over here to the rocks. Get some of the stuff out of the way again. Let's see, I need a highlight color again. And I'm gonna go back down here to the, where is it, the lichen right there. Sorry, I couldn't find it for a second there. And I'm gonna really start punching up some of these uh, highlights on this foam, this spray. Really make it stand out a little bit more. I just really like the way this lichen brush works for foam and stuff. It works great for clouds too. If you lay it in, then just kind of use it to go back and soften it with a palette knife. But it works really well for uh, some of these other ones like particle snow, which gives you the great splashes of spray. See those random spots. in this rock. Again, I want to try and go for that wind pushed and swept storm like either blowing in or blowing out. I never know which one, but um, I want it to really feel like it's rough seas and it's really just a chaos coming in. But again, I need to kind of push some of this back a little bit. So let me jump over the blurred frosting and the way it gives your eye kind of a spot to rest. See how that softens it and kind of blends it together. Just like that. And to me, by doing it that way, it really kind of captures the movement more. You know, it um, doesn't look like it's just a snapshot as much, or, or maybe it does. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But to me, it just it gives it more... It emphasizes the movement. Like if you took a picture, you know, some of it was blurred because it just wasn't going to be caught by the camera. All right, so let me soften some of this. Back to the lichen or particles. Yeah, let's go particles. There we go. And soften it. Ah, sorry, finger popped. I do need to erase some of this though, because it's getting too solid. Move it back to here. Now we're 
put some spray in on this. Soften it out a little bit with the pellet knife. And I gotta go in and erase these gaps that are showing. So I've got the lichen, now I've got the, uh, start putting in some of the spray again, and I'll go back and clear all this up from the rock. I'm just, again, pushing it and playing around with it, see if it's what I want. Just erase this out. Just adding in some highlights and foam. And a little watercolor brush to soften it out. the foam bringing it all together trying to get some of those lighter colors and grays and stuff down through here it kind of really helps set the rock into the water use it to really um, you know really push the uh, highlights and the shape of the rock around with it this way all right just kind of blend this over a little bit So yeah, so what do you guys want to see for the next one? Do you, I've seen it doing a space scape. Or, like I said, doing more of the smaller, quick tutorials. Um, I did have somebody from the uh, Facebook group mention about doing watercolors. So I was thinking about doing some watercolor style painting um, in here as well. So that we can kind of see how it does it. I, I like doing, um, and I have for a while, but I like doing... Uh, like Chinese uh, watercolors. So is that something that maybe you guys would want to see or what? Just leave a comment below and let me know. And like I said, join over in the uh, Facebook group so we can talk about it more there too. So you see how it's starting to bring together the harmony of the colors by doing this, by going back and forth. Okay. And part of the other reason I was doing it before was that the foam I had over here was really too bright, so I needed to grab some of this.
So by doing it this, and again, this brush, you know, it's going to change it on its own for, for the value. I've got a real dark one picked, but it's still kind of high, making it a little bit brighter highlight, but it's still dark enough where it's in shadow compared to the other foam spray. And that's really all I care about. All right, so I do need to play around over here for a minute. Kind of balance this out. So I think I'm going to put a rock here, like I mentioned earlier. Again, just kind of a random shape. Thinking about, well, how's the water already hitting it? And could go right here, so that way it's kind of going with the spray that I've got there already. And now I'm just going to do it the same way as I did the other one. Go to the rock layer and start um, painting it in using the oil brush. And since I've got the colors on the other one, I can just keep going back and forth to look for my highlights and colors there by making these quick, bigger strokes and looser strokes. I can start to do this rock faster. It's always faster for me after I've done one to kind of play around because I've got the colors chosen from the other one. See, now I can really lay in these uh, broad planes for the rocks much faster. Because I'm not having to so much think about the color, just the, um, I keep forgetting to move that. So just the, uh, kind of the shape. So the color's already kind of taken care of from the other ones. back a little bit though. Kind of push some of the highlights. Oops, not that much though. And that red smear doesn't tend to move it as much. Again, just by playing with the colors that I have and the pushing and pulling, I've got the planes and the rocks, you know, pretty quickly. And then just, uh, just soften them down into the water. hard edge off. Almost done. texture here from the pencil. Again, same thing I was doing the other one. I'm just going to start adding in where I think some water should be and then go back and kind of smear it around. But I really love the, the palette knife tool, the way you can just really manipulate the paint. I 
really any of the things, the pencil, the chalk, the paint, whatever. Let's see, I need... Yeah, the hard tip. It just makes a little finer line. One of the things I love about Art Rage versus, say, Photoshop, is you see the texture of the paint that's in there from uh, just using the palette knife and the oil brush. It's much more like it would be if I was using traditional oils or acrylics. And that's one of the things that's really drawn me to it. I mean, I can paint in Photoshop, and, and I've got some really good stuff I've done in it, but I really like just the Art Rage for more for painting like this. If I'm going to do, like, design work as far as, like, you know, uh, some of the clients I work with, I have designed custom coupons and things like that. So, I mean, that's more Photoshop. That's what that's designed more for. I mean, a lot of people use it for illustration and painting and stuff. But for me, it works better to do it for graphic design than for actual painting. Here I can just get that more painterly approach. Okay, I just need to keep softening this out a little bit. Just adding more highlights. But yeah, I mean, if you've if you've enjoyed this, you know, as I'm kind of, I think I'm, I always get this feeling for when I'm about done with stuff, and I'm starting to get that feeling for here, so I don't, probably not going to sit here and play with this much more. Um, but I do want to change the shape, because you see how this is starting to get that repetition of pattern? I've got that very stair-stepped pattern, so I want to break that up a little bit. Because like I said, it's it's just a human thing. We, we want patterns. So I'm just going to go around and push some of the stuff and break up some of these lines. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this, I would love to hear your comments below about feedback for what could be better, what could be um, changed, what you want to see next, um, and all that. So if you've enjoyed it, you know, please like it, please share it, uh, and please subscribe. So that way when the new stuff's coming out, and go over to Facebook through the link below and, and um, you know, join the Facebook group. Uh, I'm really wanting to build that up to be a community for... Uh, everybody really as far as like people that are wanting to learn artwork uh learn to paint learn to sculpt i'm gonna put some sculpting stuff on here too because uh, my bachelor of fine arts degree is in painting and sculpting so but i really want to share that with homeschoolers with adults with um, everybody that's just interested in a more intimate kind of setting so um, i'm really hoping you're you're enjoying this um because these take me a little while, and, and I want to make sure that somebody's getting something out of it. So let me know what you think. Let me know um, what you're getting out of it. Hopefully you're getting to see some of the technique and kind of the behind the scenes of how I create these things. And again, just putting in highlights right here and those purples and blues. I keep thinking about doing one of these with like oranges and yellows and stuff, make it look like, you know, sulfur lakes or something on some distant planet. some water trickles coming off here. Yeah, of course, as I'm finishing up here, my neighbor's dog is barking like crazy. But hey, it's real. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. It's just a real... Um, real world setting. I don't know what you guys, but I... I live a life. Well, <laughs> be it creating or painting or just doing whatever, I still got a life that I've got to live around it. So, dogs are going to bark and people are going to run around. So,
All right, so soften this down here. But see how that breaks it up and it kind of gives it more character and dimension just by adding those water trickles and then going back and kind of um, throwing some texture over it. Because, you know, you don't have to use the lichen and everything else just for the highlights. You can use it for the rocks and for textures and everything else. So, But again, the nice thing about having uh, something digital is I can jump between these layers and put more stuff behind the rock <laughs> and get it set up there. My cat just came in, so you'll probably hear her in a second. She's purring like crazy. She's only like five pounds, but she purrs like a 20 pound cat. <laughs> Get off the mic. Like I said, it's real world, guys. Everything I'm doing. She's trying her best to mess with me while I'm painting this. Trying to finish it up. Alright, so I want to go back here and put a little foam to again round out some of this wave back here. Break up that dark spot. It's a microphone. You make it really difficult to sit here and paint this. All right, so add a little bit more spray here. And go to the actual rocks layer so I can paint some of it coming, coming across on it. Again, pushes it into into the painting instead of just stamped on it. It actually pulls it into it. And now just tinkering a little bit. I want the spray to come over over it. You can see it's kind of crashing across it. Like I said, it sets it into the painting. Let me zoom out a little bit. Back to 65, because again, that lets me put just about the whole painting on here. We can see it. Get rid of some of this stuff. Change this a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. I don't know that I've ever tried the ripple brush. Nope. Rough foliage. Oh yeah, there we go. It's kind of cool. Again, it's all about the layers and the textures. Okay, so got the uh, stuff here. Let me I'm gonna put some more highlights around and about. More water running off this rock. Put over here. And this is the part where I have to be careful not to just start piddling and messing around with everything. And just, but I do want some highlights for the waters coming off because I think it kind of again helps it be part of the painting and gives that extra dimension that extra layer 
Like I said, I'm not going for realism so much. I'm going for impression. So I want the impression of lights and darks. and So that's what I'm trying to do here. I do want to throw in a little bit more around some of this stuff here, though. So bear with me while I tinker with it for just a minute or two or 12. I don't know. Just want to kind of blend these highlights down and around. So again, it kind of gives a feeling of caught in motion with the blurred sections. It just helps add some extra layer of realism. Or not realism, but continuity, I mean. Ties it all together. And plus on some of these edges here where they're a little harsh because they stop so suddenly. That's another reason I add in some of the, the blur behind it. Save it real quick. I just realized I hadn't saved it. So... Get a little bit more. I guess I can use a clown brush. It's going to change brushes, but give it a little more definition back here. The reason I'm doing this is because it's just a dark spot otherwise. But I want to have a little bit of texture and a little bit of movement. So it really helps carry it. Because if you look at this painting, you'll notice your eye is here to the left. And then it follows the foam around. And then by putting a little bit of highlight there, it kind of brings it back around over to the main. Which is this big giant wave here in the front. But if I give this just a little bit more highlight... A little bit more foam. It's going to make you pause there just ever so slightly. My old handy dandy blurred, heavy blurred frosting. Just soften some of this back. See, it kind of gives that eye now and gives a little bit more um, emphasis to this side of the canvas so everything's not all on the left side there. Because again, you want harmony, you want flow, you want direction. Zoom in here a little bit and kind of blend some of this down a little more. Again, I want it to be the foam curling up over it, so a little bit of texture to keep some of that same feeling that the up front wave has. But even here, if you look at the foam that's in front of what I'm working on now, you can see how that some of it's blurred, some of it's lighter color, it looks behind some of the stuff that's in uh, the foam that's in the front. You know, so it really, it's just by playing with value, playing with highlights and dark. Here for a minute, I'm going to break some of this up a little bit. A 
give that just a little bit more movement. It looks like it's catching some of that wind too. Almost like a, a wave cap. You know, when you get the white caps on the waves in the ocean. Kind of that, but larger scale is what I'm thinking. in the other direction here. I think it's really pushing the, the winds really kind of sweeping up the back of that wave and blowing it out. Let me throw some shadows in here as well. Those are too dark. Soften it down just a little bit. Okay, so let me look here one more time. Yeah, I think we're just about done. Let me see. Anything else I want to do here? I'll go ahead and add on a new layer, grab the old pen tool, and I'm going to sign my name on it. And I kind of have a standing thing whenever I sign my name on something, I'm done. Because that little voice in the back of my head says, finish! And so that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to sign my name on here real quick. And I'm going to change the uh, size of this, by the way. I'll shrink it down here in a second. I find it's easier just to do it here like so, and then I can shrink it down. But by picking a color that's from the painting, it gives a little more harmony, although... Now that I'm looking at this, I'll just go ahead and contort it, but I think I'm going to change that color. It's a little dark. I want it to blend in, but I don't want it to completely blend in and... Yeah, setting it somewhere else on here is going to be kind of weird. So I'll just do it here. Let that finish its thing. And then just a little trick is just to lock transparency. Grab a um, airbrush and a little bit lighter color. And then I can just go paint it. Now I've got my name over there but it still blends in with the all the harmony stuff. So again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, remember to like and share and subscribe below. And, um, you know, that way others can see it. Uh, I'm going to put my other little mark that I have here as well. Oh, wait. Uh, I've got the right color. I'm getting distracted here. I'm trying to remember what I was doing. Oh. Hang on, I think I oh yeah, got the <laughs> got the transparency on. Lock transparency kinda helps. Turn that off. Now I can put the little mark that I've got. It's too bright now. There we go. That's some my artistic mark, but anyway. Um so yeah, remember to like, share, um, subscribe, and come over and join us on that Facebook group. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you like how it turned out. And um, I look forward to doing another one real soon for you. So um, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let me know what you want to see. If you want to see more short ones, you want to see more long ones like this or what. So but here we go. There's the finished product. So I appreciate it. And I thank everyone for stopping by. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day or evening or wherever you are. Thanks so much.